Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, it's become pretty obvious to anybody who pays attention to what's going on in the world that the US, despite the rhetoric of its politicians, has now lost its role as a global hegemon as countries around the world, small and large, ignore its directive commands and appeals. I mean, it's become increasingly evident that most countries are just ignoring America and its diktats and directives and are no longer giving them due consideration. Now, Bloomberg recently carried out an analysis of the recent actions of those who are perceived to be America's enemies. I mean, to illustrate the point, the US asked Iran not to send ballistic missiles to Russia. However, Iran continued to do so despite the assurances of the Iranian president, Masoud Pezizkanian, which is uh, not the case, as far as everybody knows. Now, the US has also ordered China under threat of sanctions to stop supplying Russia with industrial goods and any technologies that can assist Moscow in navigating the sanctions against it and conducting its strategic military operations, yet Russia, uh, China continues to do so. Plus, these two countries, along with North Korea, which the United States initially considered but ultimately deemed unproductive of approach, are strengthening their alliances with Russia to challenge America's dominance in the region, despite facing some of the most significant sanctions the West has ever imposed. And also, there have been many instances of other defiance. I mean, the government of Venezuela has rejected calls from the United States to review the results of its recent presidential election, which saw Nicolas Maduro re-elected again. Now, the Houthis in Yemen are continuing their military activities, despite the best efforts by the US 7th Fleet to restrict their ability to impede shipping in the Red Sea. Now, the countries of the African continent are challenging the status quo, which has resulted in the withdrawal of Washington and its allies from their bases in Africa due to the growing influence of Russia and China. Plus, even allies such as Israel are adopting policies that are not aligned with Washington's best interests and in some cases are causing significant damage to those interests. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now for just watching, because I do appreciate every viewer. Now look at the reasons for these occurrences. Now there are three key ones. Firstly, they're representing a significant shift in the balance of power towards national sovereignty. I mean, the failure of globalization, or more precisely, the destruction of globalization by the United States has been coupled with the sharp weakening of the international institutions due to their degradation by the Americans. And that's led to a shift of focus for states with a greater reliance on their own resources and capabilities to achieve their goals. Now, in light of these developments, states have begun to more actively defend their national interests, recognizing that no other party, not even the UN, would uh, defend them except themselves. Also, it became evident that safeguarding their national interests is not as difficult and challenging as they thought. Many were previously constrained by concerns about the potential for America's coercive measures, including sanctions, humanitarian interventions, military action, isolation and even regime change. However, Russia has demonstrated that these sanctions are not as onerous and difficult to overcome as they are often portrayed in the West through media and non-government organizations. It's evident that a developed state that's integrated into the global economy, and that's not just the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, which has few options to resist sanctions, is actually capable of withstanding the most powerful sanctions in history. Russia has actually proved it. I mean, the key to success is the political will of the leadership and the unity of the people, plus having friends around the world. I mean, the primary means of achieving the unity is the confidence in the righteousness of one's actions, coupled with a sense of national pride. 
Similarly, China, which had previously always sought to avoid conflict with the United States, is now demonstrating the political courage to take a, on a more confrontational stance and telling the US basically to bugger off. I mean, in conclusion, the main third reason is American politicians, to put it mildly, have become significantly more stupid and less intelligent. I mean, there's been an ascendance of a cohort of globalist ideologues with a dearth of political experience and knowledge and the nuances of domestic political selection at primaries where radical candidates that are elevated have collectively contributed to an inability of those in power to navigate global processes of diplomacy and politics. They are incompetent in what Russia conspiracy theories call controlled chaos. Whether it's the chaos of the Arab Spring, the attempts to contain Russia through the concept of colour revolutions on its borders, or the desire to regain control of Africa, Latin American countries and stop their shift towards China. They very quickly turned into uncontrollable situations that they can't deal with and that's created new opportunities for more thoughtful and savvy politicians from countries such as China and, and <coughs> Russia and Iran. I mean, the primary challenge facing the United States is not the emergence of new competitors, because there aren't there, because Washington's experienced the challenge of maintaining control over its allies, who've been historically passive and has allowed them to ensure their global dominance, and they've also served as vassals. I mean, it's not only Turkey led by the long-term winner of the most two-faced politician award, Recep Erdogan, that's rebelling but also previously loyal Saudi Arabia. I mean, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has taken the initiative to diversify its diplomatic contacts. So I've conducted a thorough assessment of the possibilities and the desire of the US to ensure its security. Notably, it's shifted its oil trade with China to Yuan. Plus, Riyadh is engaged in close collaboration with Moscow to regulate the global oil price market. And it's also closely monitoring what Russia and China are doing in their global initiatives, including the BRICS. Israel's taking an opposing stance. Its Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has got an uncooperative stance with the US, conducting unilateral military operations in Gaza without prior coordination. I mean, this has strained US relations with the Arab world, particularly given the unique dynamics of the US-Israel alliance. Plus, Mr. Netanyahu's attempting to involve the United States in a direct military conflict with Iran. I mean, this course of action is believed by the Israeli Prime Minister to be the only way to avoid both his own resignation and the threat of a nuclear Iran. But even so-called weaker countries are uh, taking action to, in opposition to the status quo. I mean, Hungary is consistently acting as a barrier to the implementation of greater Western sanctions policies towards Moscow. I mean, the adoption of the most stringent anti-Russian sanctions, including hydrocarbons and other energy embargo, is being prevented by their actions. I mean, these action sanctions are highly detrimental to Europe, which is why the US is imposing them and Hungary uh, <coughs> is opposing them. I mean, the Caucasus Republic of Georgia is also making its position clear. Its leadership directly threatening Washington with a revision of its bilateral relationship. I mean, this is due to the fact that the United States is pressuring Tbilisi to open up a second front against Russia and also impose its LGBT values on the local population. And the Georgian authorities are currently exploring the possibility of restoring its broken relationship with Moscow after the 2008 debacle. However, Ukraine represents the greatest potential risk as a rebellious ally. Alensky's regime, which has not received the necessary weapons it feels it should have from Washington, and has experienced the perceived weakness of the American leadership, particularly now during this transition period of the up-and-coming election. It's attempted to emulate Netanyahu's strategy of levering the US into a war on its side. However, initiating hostilities with Iran is one thing, and doing so with a nuclear-armed superpower like Russia is quite another. At the same time, the United States is unable to prevent the Ukrainian leader from organising provocations that could have seriously unintended consequences, including the potential for a nuclear confrontation. 
In theory, the optimal course of action for Americans in this situation would be try and minimise the damage and move towards a diplomatic approach with those uh, who it's still possible to do so. Unfortunately, with people like Blinken in there, it's not really going to happen. I mean, for such a geological political uh, solution to uh, succeed, the US has got to be led by sober, pragmatic leaders. The question is, where do they find them? Do they exist? And if so, can they be found in time? Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please also share if you think other people will enjoy this. You can also help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button and don't forget the comments. Love to see your comments, love to read your comments and love to respond to them. See you all again soon. Thank you.